So hi, Peter. Welcome. And today is our uh, lesson number four of our ongoing KP astrology course. And uh, today we'll be, you know, we'll be, uh, we've already discussed about the sublord, but we'll try and get a better understanding of uh, what actually, you know, the role of the sublord is in KP, because that that is, uh, that is the most important concept. Okay. So... Yes. I'm sure you, by now, you have the hang of what a significator means, okay, and uh, the position of the, you know, stars in, stars or constellations in various Rashis, so the, all that we've learned, okay, and that, of course, that, um, that mental graphic you have to, you know, register in your mind as to, you know, where... Uh, where constellations belonging to different planets are placed in the zodiac. Okay, mm -hmm. so so today we'll uh, we will finally have a short class on uh, this uh, sublord KP sublord. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm going to start sharing the screen. Okay, yes, sir. Peter, just wait for a second. I don't know where yeah, uh, yeah. the screen sharing is gone. Uh, I had done, done it in the afternoon. But anyway, we'll uh, let's just just wait for a second. Yeah, no problem. Let's just see where, where that is. Okay. Okay, so uh, can you see the screen? Uh, it's coming up, I think. It's coming Not up. Yet. Yeah. Okay, it's still down. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up, okay. Yes, so uh, see the heading is, uh, the heading is understanding concept of significators mm -hmm. uh -huh. slash planetary sublords, cuspal sublords, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, now uh, I explained to you the other day that... Uh, Sublords are of two types, okay? Mm -hmm. Every planet, you know, will have a sublord, depending on where it is placed in the gotcha. zodiac or in the horoscope or in the chart. Mm -hmm. And similarly, you know, every cusp also has a sublord, okay? And both the, both the sublord, you know, they have a very, very important role to play, okay? Yes, sir. Both of them have a very important role to play. And uh, without understanding the roles of sublords, you know, we don't get anywhere in KP. Okay. So that we must understand. So see on the left side, this is on the, the center, there's this chart, okay? And on the left side, on the left side, we have the table of cusps and planets, okay? Now, as you can see now, now, okay, we'll do one thing. Just let me. Uh, uh, 
Okay, what I'll do is now see this housewife significator tables you can see on the right side. Right yes, side. Sir. Right side, you can see there. You've yeah. understood, you know, columns A, B, C, D. You've yeah. understood. Yeah. The concept is clear, no? Yes, sir. The concept is clear, okay? Yeah. So this gives you, this is the table of significators. And uh, as we've already discussed, what is column A, what is column B, what is column C, and what is column D, okay? Yeah. And we know that, you know, planets placed in column A are the strongest significators of the, of the cusp that they are placed against. Yeah. And then second in order of strength are the yeah. planets placed in column B, and then C, and then D, okay? Yeah. So now what exactly does this mean mm -hmm. just now we have you have to listen to this very very carefully okay yes sir okay and uh, before proceeding mm -hmm. one thing you must make a note of in kp yes, is you know mm -hmm. in kp uh, there are improving houses okay the okay, improving sir. houses in kp are houses 1 2 3 6 10 and 11. Okay. okay yeah. 1, 2, 3, 6, 10 and 11. 11. Okay, sir. Okay. 8 and 12 are the, you know, malefic houses. Or you can say 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, 11 are the good houses, positive houses. And 8 and 12 are the malefic houses. Okay. And other houses are sort of neutral. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what exactly we do we mean? We mean, you know, that any planet or any house having connections with the improving houses is good for the horoscope. And planets having connections with 8 and 12 are bad for the horoscope. Okay? Yes, 8 sir. and 12 also, like we studied in Vedic, 6, 8 and 12. These are the, supposed to be the three malefic houses. But then they also have something good to offer. Okay, like the eighth house, you know, you don't have, you don't get any inheritance without the eighth house house being score uh, be, being strong. Okay, you yes, don't sir. undertake long journeys if your twelfth house is not strong. You don't go overseas, you know, till your twelfth house it's supports strong. you. Okay, and sixth house, of course, is a mixed house. It is the house of it is mostly a positive house okay. because you see financial financial standing you are getting a job especially in kp without the sixth sixth house coming into play you don't get a job okay in yes, sir. sixth house has to participate for you to get a job and it gives you financial stability as well at the same time mm -hmm. but sixth house is also the house of disease mm -hmm. okay so yes, it is a malefic house as well as you know it has some very sound and good qualities okay, okay? At the same time, remember, in Vedic also we, disturb, we discussed it, and uh, more so in KP, any house that is the 12th house to the next house is a disturbing, is a negating house for the succeeding house, like the 11th house, no, sorry, like the 7th house is the house of marriage. Okay. Yes, sir. The 6th house being the 12th to the sixth, seven. to yep. the sixth, oh, to the seventh, sorry, to mm -hmm. the seventh, the sixth house being 12 to the seventh is a negating house for the seventh house. That means a disturbing house for the seventh house significations, mainly marriage. Okay. Eleventh okay. house is the house of, you know, it is the house of yeah. fulfillment of desires. It also, it also helps in marriage. So, Tenth, tenth is always not a negating house for the eleventh. That is an exception. Okay, other okay. preceding houses, twelfth house to other, any other house, are negating houses. Eleven, tenth is an exception, except for marriage. Tenth is not a good house for marriage. Okay, so these two three concepts you have to have in mind, like the improving houses. Okay, to understand what we are going to discuss today. Uh, mm -hmm. These concepts are very important. Now, look, see, this table of significators, you've understood, no? Any questions on this 
Only then we can proceed. If there's any clarity that you want to have on the table of significators, only then... Um, for this housewife significator tables, uh, mostly we talk about at the stellar levels, right? At the nakshatra levels. Because what we found here uh, seems to me like that. It, it only comes from the stellar level, from the, uh, the star lord levels, correct? This is the stellar level signification. Oh, yeah, yeah. This okay. table is the stellar level signification, okay? Okay, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to have clearly in your mind. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. One is the stellar level sig signification, which is this okay. table. Okay. And the other that we are now going to see will be the cuspal level significations. Yes, sir. Uh, at, okay. at stellar level, which is the same as nakshatra. Nakshatra, stellar, okay. star, nakshatra, uh -huh. uh, constellation, all one yes. and the same thing. Okay, you can okay. say at the nakshatra level, you can say at the constellation level, you can say at the star level, you can say at the stellar level. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yep. So yep. now, what we have to understand, now listen to this very, very carefully. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, say for example, let's take the second house. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's uh -huh. take the second. Who's the significator for the second house? Um, Venus, Mercury. No. Venus. Okay, and yep. Mercury. Okay. Venus is the strongest significator. Okay. Yes, sir. For the second house. Okay. So, uh, what does you know that and, and another thing you know that uh, house house combinations that mm -hmm. table I have already sent you with the write ups how mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in KP. House that coping. except also you have to you know you study it okay yes okay like, you know combinations for an event okay, okay combinations for an event okay yes sir combinations for an event like marriage when does a marriage happen okay when does a marriage take place and then when how do you get a job um, a marriage will happen only when the significators of second seventh and eleventh houses they come into play during the Dasha Antar, BBAS as we call them, Dasha Bhukti Antara and Sukshma. During okay, their yeah. Dashas, that event of marriage will take place. When the significators of 2, 7 and 11 meet, yeah, they, their Dashas, you know, they, they are acting at the same time. Yeah. When they happen at the same time, then a marriage is likely to take place. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, one, one last question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the house wise certificators table, okay, will indicate at the standard level, will indicate whether an event will happen or not. One second. No, no, no. That's what we are going to now today understand. Mm -hmm. We talk about a marriage. Okay. Now let's see yeah. who's the second, uh, who's this marriage happens when two, seven and 11, six, 11. they yeah. come to play. So every yes, chart will have significators of Two, seven, and eleven. Correct. Maybe yes. one planet, more than one planet. Yes. There may be, you know, three, four planets combined. Yes. Like here in this chart, Venus signifies second house. Moon yes, and sir. they signify the seventh house, and yes. Sun signifies and other planets also. A, I'm talking about the A level. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A level means the strongest. If A the strongest. Okay. If A column mm -hmm. is blank, B column is blank, then the mm -hmm. C column significator becomes the strongest yeah. significator. Yep. Okay. okay sir. Yep. So you know that you have to understand. Yes, sir. Okay. So so if marriage were to happen for this native, then in the period, combined period of Venus, Venus. Moon or Moon or Saturn and mm -hmm. Sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Marriage could take place. Mm -hmm. Okay. But does every human being on this planet get married? Oh, not really. <laughs> not really. There are so many Depends. people, you know, yeah. who don't get married even after, you know, their best mm -hmm. efforts, the best efforts by their parents. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they come across partners, they come boys come across girls and girls come across boys and men come across uh, women and women come across, they meet each other, but still they are not able to get married. Mm -hmm. So first of all, an event has to be promised. Okay. Okay. First mm -hmm. of all, an event has to be promised. Mm -hmm. Only if an event is promised, mm -hmm. then this combination comes into play and mm -hmm. a marriage will take place or any 
marriage any event will take place so you know for for different events mm-hmm. promise the first the promise is to be seen mm-hmm. okay how is the promise going to be seen mm-hmm. so for every event you know there is there is a primary cusp like for okay. marriage mm-hmm. 7 11 are the combination of cusps or okay. the planets that are going to give marriage mm-hmm. but there will be a primary cusp in case of marriage it is the seventh cusp or the seventh yes. house mm-hmm. now the cuspal sublord mm-hmm. of the seventh cusp mm-hmm. for a marriage you know where do we see the cuspal sublord see the left side cuspal position stable on the left side you can see yes sir thing. yes sir yes sir okay now yes, i'll take owl. i'll take this arrow see here okay uh-huh. cusps are here 1 2 3 4 2 8 12 12 now 7 who is the seventh cuspal sublord uh, it mercury is, it mercury. is mercury yep. now mercury has to be somewhere connected with you know 2711 2711 11. only then that event is promised okay okay may it be at the you know it may be at the a level b level c level d level but mercury okay. somewhere has to be connected Uh-huh. With two seven and eleven, let us okay. see whether Mercury is connected with two seven and eleven. Mercury sees signifies two, uh-huh. yep, at D level, mm-hmm. okay, and then the seven nothing, nothing eleven. Yeah. But still, you know, this is good enough for us to mm-hmm. say that you know marriage is promised. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is the first step. Mm-hmm. But it is this is not the decisive. this this is this is not you know this is not decisive mm-hmm. this is step number 1 mm-hmm. for you know looking at a promise of an event mm-hmm. this is just step number 1 okay okay mm-hmm. next we have to see whether mercury being mm-hmm. sublord of the 7th whether mm-hmm. it signifies any of the marriage negating houses strongly so okay. marriage negating houses mainly would be the 6th house 6 yes sir okay so sixth house we see that mercury is also there negating but at the d level when is when so we don't eight. say that you know marriage is ruled out no we don't say uh-huh. that uh-huh. okay yep had mercury you know be been a significator of the seventh house at d level and a significator of the sixth house at a level then we could have said that you know marriage is difficult not ruled out why uh-huh. because mercury is also signifying seventh house uh-huh. <laughs> so this is now this is how we see this is how we see a pro- a promise okay a promise of an, e- of an event of an event whether it, whether it will occur or not or whether it will occur or not okay okay so i summarize is that okay we look one at- minute one one and one minute one minute okay, yeah before that before that let us understand you know let us understand you know the three significators suppose venus okay the significators of 2 7 and 11 yes, you know sir. their cuspal sublords also have to be supportive now in this case mm-hmm. now in this case we see that marriage is promised okay mm-hmm. yes, marriage sir. is promised okay mm-hmm. we are going ahead with the we, now we come to the prediction a client has come to you he is asking you whether you know marriage is going to we'll talk about the timing later we are not oh, discussing yes, this sir. we okay, are just yes, seeing you know whether an event promise. is promised and how and when it will take place okay uh-huh. so the next question he'll ask you is you know whether whether you know how is the marriage going to be is it going to be a successful marriage okay you know are we going to be happily married or are there going mm-hmm. to be problems or mm-hmm. are there chances of you know are there chances of divorce separation you know is it going to be a happy marriage a miserable marriage mm-hmm. for that again you see we have to see the planetary sublords mm-hmm. the sublord of the marriage giving planets mm-hmm. venus okay in second then moon saturn and mm-hmm. sun sun mm-hmm. now who is the sublord of venus sublord of venus is you will get sun, sir. This state, yeah yeah Who is sun, sun? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you have to see what the sun. It is 
son also have has to be a happy happy cuspal significator let's put it that way okay for the marriage to be okay for so what is son signifying here you can see son is signifying the 11 11, 11. Th, which is a very good house. house yeah very good which house. is the most positive house in any horoscope let's put it that yeah. way you yes, know for sir. nothing happens without the 11th house mm -hmm. that we've learned in vedic also okay mm -hmm. that we've learned so sun is signifying the 11th house very good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now next moon and saturn okay mm -hmm. who is the sub lord of moon it is saturn so who sat what is saturn signifying saturn is signifying the first so, house house yeah saturn is signifying the sixth house sixth house Saturn is signifying again. What is, uh, what is Moon uh, or Moon is set signifying the tenth house. Moon is signifying the first house. Saturn is signifying the sixth house. Okay, and Saturn is it is already a significator of the seventh. So seventh first house. and sixth, Moon signifying first set. See the first house is not a very very good house for marriage. Okay, okay. keep that in yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we say that you know marriage could take marriage will take place. We'll predict the timing also, but when it, if it come when it comes to you know when it comes to the happiness of the marriage, it may not be a very very good marriage. Very, uh, we are not saying that it's going to be a miserable marriage because uh -huh. it's a mixed sort of a thing. Now let's uh -huh. see the sublord of sun. Who is the sublord of sun? It is Saturn. Saturn. Sir. So Saturn again signifies the sixth house. Okay, uh -huh, uh -huh. signifies the sixth house and the first house. Uh -huh. So, but at the B level and uh -huh. first A house, level. The, A level. See, the main negating house for marriage is the sixth house. Sixth house. So that you have as an astrologer, you have to. If the sublords are signifying the primary negating houses, then the it's a big problem. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now it could be a denier also. If all the you know is suppose the sublord of Venus, Moon, Saturn, and Sun, mm -hmm. they were suppose say hypothetically how to hypothetically speaking they were suppose signifying the sixth house majorly, mm -hmm. then you could say that marriage may not even take place. Mm -hmm. If it takes place, it's going to be a very very miserable marriage. Miserable marriage. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So Peter, this is one concept. Mm -hmm. Okay, very important concept. Mm -hmm. This up, up, an event is promised. Mm -hmm. The stellar level significators, mm -hmm. that is the significators as per this table, uh -huh. they promise an event, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which they will bring about during their dashas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Mahadasha Lord, the Antar Dasha Lord, Lord. Okay. In combination, the Sukshm Dasha Lord, okay? Yes, sir. The yes, Pratyantar Dasha Lord. In combination, they will bring about an event. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the quality of that event, mm -hmm. for checking the quality of the event, mm -hmm. we have to check the sublord significations. Okay. Okay? Yes. So, to decide whether any events is promised or is going to happen or not. We look at uh, that events from the house that's related to that event. Uh, by no, not the house. For the, a promise of an event, this mm -hmm. sublord okay. of the mm -hmm. primary house, house. Mm -hmm. for an event, like uh -huh. let's be talking about marriage, like okay. say for childbirth, Mm -hmm. The fifth, fifth house is the primary house for primary childbirth. House, yeah. So we look at the sublord of the fifth house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sublord of the fifth house, whether it is supporting childbirth, whether it is supporting, where, by supporting, whether it is signifying the child giving houses. Houses, okay. Five and eleven. Okay. Whether the fifth sublord is supporting the child child childbirth houses of two five and eleven only then a childbirth is promised okay. and suppose it is signifying you know two five eleven as well as fourth number four then you know a child birth of a child is promised but with some but, problems 
yeah, okay. maybe miscarriage or whatever. Miscarriage or maybe denial also at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now for that, Peter, now you have to understand one more thing. The most important thing, see, this is the stellar level significations. Yes, sir. They're very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are very important. Mm -hmm. But now, what may happen is, you know, when we all start KP, uh, learning KP, during our time, you know, there was nobody to teach us. There were only books. There were no computers. And the literature available was also very, very limited. Mm -hmm. Only uh, only books written by Krishnamurti himself or his yes. sons, they were available. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in our enthusiasm, you know, we learned, oh, 2711 will give marriage. So we yeah. start we start with predictions, you know, tell a client, yeah, yeah, marriage is promised on this date. But what I, what I am going to tell you just now, okay, that other astrologers, they don't teach. They don't teach, okay? I don't know why they don't teach, either... Uh, Okay, another thing, another caution that I will tell you is, you know, that, uh, okay, now let's see what I'm going to tell you first. Yes. See these cuspal sublords, the planetary mm -hmm. sublord we've understood. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cuspal sublords mm -hmm. sub, in this table, okay? Cuspal yes, sublord sir. is the actual gateway uh -huh. to an event happening or not happening. Mm -hmm. Suppose the cuspal sublord, suppose, you know, we see from the stellar sub from the stellar significators that 2, 7, and 11, you know, 2, 7, and 11, the dasha is running, everything is there. The, the, the cuspal, the, uh, the, the sublords of the cuspal significators, sorry, the, of the stellar significators are also supporting marriage. Suppose, you know, suppose the, uh, suppose the sublords of Venus, Venus and Moon, Saturn and Sun, they are also strongly supporting marriage. Mm -hmm. We declare that marriage will happen. But mm -hmm. remember always, the cuspal, uh, the cuspal sublord, cusp of the primary house, mm -hmm. if it is strongly negating the event, okay, that means it is just shutting off that event. That event will never happen. Oh, okay, sir. Okay? Suppose in this case, Suppose in this case, you know, yes, one minute. Suppose in this case, Suppose in this case, now who's the sublord of the seventh house? Sublord of seventh house is Mercury, sir. It is Mercury, okay. Okay, Mercury. Seventh house sublord is Mercury, okay? Yes, sir. Now, suppose in this case, suppose Mercury was written yeah. here. Just uh -huh. try and understand what I am saying, okay? Suppose. Suppose Mercury was written here. Being sublord house, Mercury, the cuspal, the cuspal sublord of the seventh house mm -hmm. is a strong significator of the sixth Correct. house. Okay? And also suppose it is a strong significator of the... of the first house also and of the of the 10th house also uh, appear in the book 
the cuspal sublord it when it may not even but if it is the you know if it is the a level significator of and at the same time if it is not a significator the significator of the supporting houses like 7th 2nd 11th only if it is you know a significator of the primary negating houses to marriage six then the you know door for marriage is mm -hmm. shut for the native mad it marriage will never take place uh -huh. marriage will never take place <laughs> Okay, get my point. Uh, so if the cuspal sublord appear in a uh, twelve house from any house that you're looking at, then yeah. that, that event, event will that event could be negated. Okay, would not happen. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. That event could be negated. Okay. okay? Uh -huh. Like for you know, like for getting a job. Okay, uh -huh. for getting a job. The tenth cuspal sublord, cuspal. Remember cuspal, yeah. mm -hmm. and the sixth cuspal sublords. Mm -hmm. They are very important. Uh -huh. Six, Who's tenth cuspal sub? Tenth cuspal sublord is Venus. Sir. Is Venus. Mm -hmm. Venus. And the house give the job giving houses are two, six, and ten. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So negating houses for a job will be one, five, and five, nine. Five, nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if Venus, you know, mm -hmm. the cuspal sublord of the tenth house. Mm -hmm. And the cuspal sublord of the sixth house, Saturn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they become significators of the job negating houses. Uh -huh. One, like one, five, five, and nine. Ten. Mainly five and five and nine. Sorry, five uh -huh. and nine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, what happens? There are chances that the native may not get a job throughout okay. his life, or mm -hmm. even if he gets a job, you know, it it may be menial jobs and. What I mean to say that source of you know that source uh -huh. of earning of source of livelihood mm -hmm. that is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. That job thing will be denied to that native. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. But I am cautioning you. See now these cuspal sublord. You know, since you know the zodiac goes around. You know, the zodiac goes one full circle in a day in twenty four hours. So every two to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. The cuspal sublords will change. Correct. Yeah. Remember. Yeah, yeah. Depending on you know, if you recall the the biggest span that uh, span or the timing for a cuspal sublord is that of Venus because the twenty the years the is of twenty years. Uh -huh. So Venus sublord for mm -hmm. any cusp will last for about eight to nine minutes. After that, it changes okay. because the zodiac will shift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for using the cuspal sublord. Mm -hmm. There has to be absolute accuracy, you know, in the time of birth. Otherwise, don't use the cuspal sublord. You will not get results. Okay. Planetary sublords will not change. Mm -hmm. See, planets move very slowly, you know, in uh -huh. comparison to the zodiac. Like mm -hmm. Saturn, you know, like Moon is the fastest moving planet. But mm -hmm. still, for the sublord of the Moon to change, it will take a few hours. Mm -hmm. So no, the birth time will not come into play. Mm -hmm. The accuracy of the birth time does not affect the planetary sublords. Okay. Oh yeah. But okay. If the if the accuracy if the birth time is not noted accurately, even if it is off by fifteen to twenty minutes, then all the cuspal sublords, you know, will be erroneous. They'll be wrong. Okay. So uh -huh. in case we will not we cannot depend on the cuspal sublords in a natal chart when we are doing horary when we come to horary you know what horary is no yeah yeah Ashna. there of course the you know the role of the cuspal sublords is very important the concept mm -hmm. will remain the same mm -hmm. but if a birth chart is absolutely accurate then the cuspal sublord plays a very important role you know in Either opening the gate for an event to happen, you know, it is the gateway to the cusp to the events which are contained the inside house. the cusp. Okay, yeah. like for fourth for for building a house or purchasing a house, buying a vehicle, the fourth sublord, you know, fourth cuspal sublord mm -hmm. is all important. If yes. it has if it shuts up your fourth house, then your your education, your your house, your vehicle, you stand, you will not, you know, achieve anything in your life. 
mother. Okay. So now if you've understood this concept, you know, we'll we'll just we'll take we'll another I'll show you another. You must have if you have seen that video. If you have seen that video, yes, I've, I've I've discussed a chart in that. Okay. Uh -huh. So we'll take up that chart. We'll discuss it. Yes, yes sir. That will make things clearer to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. See now, this is the chart of a of of a person. You know, we, uh, I know his date of birth is 1956. So now he would be what? Uh, 56 means 44, and he's almost 65, 66, 65. now. So he he didn't get a, he never got a job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is see this is the I've. I've fenced off all the important things. I'll just yeah. I'll just read out and then explain to you. Okay. Yeah. This is the horoscope of a negative of a native belonging to a very well-to-do family. Okay. A well-to-do family. He could not get an education, never did anything in his life. In spite of favorable Dasha periods. Now remember, in spite of favorable Dasha periods, he could not finish his education, nor could he do any job or business. Mm -hmm. Okay. He is now almost 65 years old. There are a number of planets signifying 2, 6, 7, 2, 6, 10, 7, 11. If you see the right hand, yes, sir. House of significators, there are a uh -huh. number of planets signifying uh -huh. 2, 6, 10, 7, 11, right, which sir. is combination for a job, job as well as business. Yes, sir. 7 signifies business, okay? Mm -hmm. Or any business, but or any business kept eluding him. What could be the reason? For a job, for a job, the 10th cuspel sublord should be a significator of any one of the houses 2, 6, 7, 10, and 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. If this is not the case, the person will not do anything in his life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, now we'll see. Yes, sir. Now, see the significators of his second. Second, sixth, and tenth house. Okay, mm -hmm. Venus, Venus, Mars, mm -hmm. and Moon, Mars, Venus. Okay, two, six, ten for job. Let's let's say for a job. Okay, mm -hmm. these are the significators as per the house of significators on your right side, on the right hand side of the screen. Yes. Okay, now he during his the the prime of his life, mm -hmm. you know, he went through Venus Dasha. His date of birth was. 1956. So nine in from his Venus was from 1974 to 1994. One thing you have to remember, wow. you know that this the Dasha periods of the significator should also fall, you know, mm -hmm. during your marriageable age or during the age when which you know when we you are likely to get a job. That's okay, awesome. only then the event you cannot get a job when you're 60. Yeah, so correct. Periods also, you see, it's a combination of so many things. The yeah. Dasha periods also have to support you. The favorable planets in your horoscope have, mm -hmm. you know, their Dasha period has to run. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is, so now, he date of birth is 56. Mm -hmm. His Venus started in 1974 when he Four. would have been, uh, when he would have been 1956. 15. 18 and it was to last till for 20 years. Uh -huh. 18 plus 20, 38. Uh -huh. So this was the age, you know, when he could have got a job. Okay. Yes, sir. Venus, Venus, you know, in 20 years, Venus would have seen all the Antar Dasha, it's a Mahadasha Lord. Yeah, uh -huh. So all the favorable Antar Dasha Lords of, you yes. know, song with Venus, but still yeah. he didn't get a job. The combinations are there. Okay. If you see the sublords, now if, we, if you see the sublords also, Mm -hmm. Okay, forget the sublord. Why didn't why didn't he get a job? See now, see the tenth sublord. Okay, tenth sublord. Who's the tenth sublord? Peter. Saturn, sir. Saturn. Mm -hmm. What are the significations of Saturn? Uh, generally, he's right. You mean delay? Me. See the right side. What are the uh -huh. significations of Saturn? Uh, signification of Saturn would be uh, Saturn itself. No, no, Saturn. It is the Lord of the tenth house. Yes, correct. Aspel yeah. sub Lord of the tenth house, tenth house. Yeah, correct. has to support. Uh -huh. You know, has to be associated with the job two giving houses. houses. Two, six, two, and ten. Two, two, six, ten. But here, Saturn being the sub Lord of the tenth house uh -huh. is associated with which of the houses? Is it associated with any of the job giving houses? Two, six, and ten. Tell me. Not at all. 
not at all. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So the tenth house was shut for him. Correct. Mm-hmm. Try as much as he would, you know, he would not get a job, and he did not get a job. Okay. Yeah. Now look at the sublot of the sixth house. Uh, sixth house Saturn. has to support Saturn. for getting a job. Who is uh-huh. the sublot? Saturn too. Again, Saturn. Mm-hmm. And so, not appear in, in any two, not appear okay. to 610. Who is the sublot of the seventh house? Seventh house is the house for doing some business. business. Saturn as well. Saturn as well. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't get a job, okay? He couldn't get a job. Yep. Mm-hmm. So this is how, you know, mm-hmm. we just, we cannot in isolation, we can't see the stellar level certifications. We have to see the significations of the planets at the stellar level first uh-huh. their sublords whether they are supporting and uh-huh. first of all before seeing all that first mm-hmm. of all we have to see whether the sublord of the cusp mm-hmm. or the relative house mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. of the requisite house for an event whether that is support that that is promising the event or not only then we can go ahead with the question or the prediction. Okay. Okay. So that would, the summary would be for an event to promise. First, you have to see the promise of the event. You see the okay. promise of the event by looking at the Cuspel okay. Sublord. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cuspel Sublord, it has to, you know, it has to sort of open the gateway for ah. the event to happen. It has the to gateway, appear. Yeah, sorry. It has to appear in a relative, uh, yes. relevant, relevant house. Yes, relevant. only then, you know, only then the others, the stellar level significators come into play. Okay. Only then. Okay. I see. Yep. Okay. Now, this is, is this clear? Yeah. So look at the sublot of the related cast. Now see what now this is this is this is the concept that I have taught you. Yes, when sir. we you, when we do you know the event wise when we study marriage, uh-huh. okay, when we study childbirth, mm-hmm. then we'll see a number of charts okay, where sir. marriage has been denied or marriage has been delayed or marriage has not been successful. Mm-hmm. There we will take up individual cases. Okay, okay. Sir. This is just to explain to you. Yeah, the concept. Concepts. Yep. I think the concept part, you know, will finish today. Yeah, okay, sir. Yep. From mm-hmm. from the next class, we'll take up event-wise. The first event that we take up is longevity, you know. Okay, sir. Yeah. Longevity of a person. That yes, sir. Another concept that you have to understand is mm-hmm. the concept of an untenanted planet. What do you okay. mean by an untenanted planet? Mm-hmm. See, as I told you, every planet has three stars or three constellations. Uh-huh. And in any of the constellations, a planet may be sitting, it may not be sitting. Okay. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. like for example, here, mm-hmm. see this Mars. Mars, see it. Mars against mm-hmm. in column B against mm-hmm. cusp four. Mars is the occupant. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh-huh. But there is no planet in any of the stars of Mars. Uh-huh, okay. Occupied. Uh-huh. We say that Mars is untenanted. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. It doesn't have a tenant, you know, in its mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. A star is the constellation is its house. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have any tenant. So it is an untenanted planet. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the significance of an untenanted planet? An untenanted planet becomes very, very strong. It becomes very powerful. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. what do we mean by it becomes powerful? Like if it becomes the cuspal sublord of any of the cusps, like if you see, if you see the stable here on the left, Mars appearing as a cuspal sublord of any of the houses. Mars appear as a couple cuspal sublord. Uh, of eleven, eleven. eleven. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. if an untenanted planet becomes the cuspal sublord mm-hmm. of any of the cusps, mm-hmm. then it becomes a very strong significator also of that cusp. Okay. That 
you will not now Mars for this mm-hmm. chart is a very strong significator of the eleventh yeah. house. Uh-huh. Okay, of the eleventh. Yes, you will not find in the mm-hmm. stable. You will not. You will have to make a note of it. Of the untenanted yeah. planets, you will have to make a note of the untenanted planets. Mm-hmm. Any other untenanted planet? Can we? Are there any other untenanted? Uh, I don't untenanted planets. Yes, okay, yeah. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. So okay. So how about Mars? Sir? Mars in the first uh, house. Sorry. Mars in the first house. Mars in the first house. This untenanted. That's okay. Mars will remain wherever it appears. Okay. <laughs> no, what are you saying, Mars? In the first house, it also remain untenanted. It is appear in the columns, right? In the first house. Mars appear in the first column. Yeah. In the column. There's no plan. Actually, yeah. there will not be any planet here. Yeah. So Mars yeah. becomes here. Yeah. Yeah, Mars yeah. is the significator. Mm-hmm. It's tenth house, and you know, of the tenth house, Mars is a very oh. strong significator. But it also mm-hmm. becomes eleventh yeah. house. It is not appearing in this table, no. But nah. since it is the cuspal sublord of the eleventh house mm-hmm. and an untenanted mm-hmm. cuspal sublord, then it becomes a very strong significator of the eleventh uh-huh. house also. Okay. Yes, so here, Mars is a powerful. Significator for the of the 11th house. house, it is a powerful significator of the 11th house. That is why, probably, mm-hmm. this person, mm-hmm. although he did not get a job, mm-hmm. but he, you know, he, he, he did not suffer mm-hmm. because he belongs to a good family. Mm-hmm. And Mars, you know, is a significator of the 10th house, it is a significator of the second house. So Mars mm-hmm. kept playing its role, you know, it, it did not, and it is a significator of the 11th house. His wishes, you know, it never let him suffer. So financially is okay because he belongs to a very strong family. Financially, they're very well off. Mm-hmm. So probably that is the reason why, in spite, you know, of his not getting, being employed or being able to finish his education properly, education. in spite of all that, you know, this person, uh, he was never very miserable. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, he was yeah. very miserable. Okay. He had a decent life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has. He has a decent life. Uh, so. Well, I I want to be in his family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See the same thing, you know. But now, like uh, like I said, he never, you know, jo- education also. Mm-hmm. See now, see the cusp of the the cuspal sublord of the fourth house. Yes, it sir. is Jupiter. Okay. Uh-huh. Now Jupiter at the stellar level signifies mm-hmm. Jupiter at the stellar um, level signifies the eighth house. Mm-hmm. The eighth house. So eighth house is the house of uh-huh, impediments. Yeah, yeah. You know, it is the house yeah. of impediments. It is the house of impediments. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it sort of, you know, never supported it. It it, it, it kept on, you know, giving impediments. It did uh-huh. not open the gateway for his education to be education. complete. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because it is a very strong significator of the eighth house. Yes, sir. But at the same time, eighth house is also for you know inheritance. Mm-hmm. So you see, you have to put everything belongs to a rich family. Uh-huh. So maybe he'll get inheritance or something like that. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. So this is how you have to how we have to interpret horoscopes in KP. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Um which handout is about the untenanted, sir. Uh, sorry, which handout is about the antenantes significator, sir? I'll uh, I'll send you a video. I'll, yeah, I I don't think there'll be any separate handout, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is, it is only a concept. Uh-huh, uh-huh, it'll, uh-huh. Keep, it'll keep cropping up from time to time. Uh huh. And uh-huh. it'll keep cropping up, and then uh, you have to. It is only a concept that you have to apply wherever it uh-huh. comes. Plays its role. Okay. Uh huh. Uh-huh. There may not be a separate handout uh, oh. because. There's nothing a lot to write. There's only yeah, one yeah, yeah. I have to understand. It is yeah. Can concept. you can can you type it in WhatsApp so so I can put it in the handouts? Sorry? Can you like a, a little bit a sentence or two about untenanted significator so I can put it in a in the handouts? I'll I no, I, I don't I, I don't think I have maybe somewhere I must have written. Uh-huh. You'll have to, I'll also I'll have to see the all the handouts. Okay. I'll uh-huh. have, I'll oh, yeah. have to see. Yep. But then so that's it, Peter. Okay. Okay, sir. So see you on Tuesday. Uh, that's it today and yes, uh, so I I guess the conceptual part is now clear to you. 
Yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. If you have any questions, you can jot down the question then. Yeah. Sir. You know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, stopping the recording now. Okay. Yes, sir. See you on Tuesday, sir. Okay then. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.